millions of people around the world play Sudoku on a regular basis. Some are just looking to have some fun, but others are hoping that Sudoku will help improve their brain health. But is Sudoku really good for your brain? Hi, I'm Dr. Patricia Shelton, lead medical communicator for Tahiro. And let's take a look at this article here on Tahiro's website about Sudoku and brain health. So it does appear to be true that the brain needs a cognitive workout, much like the physical body needs exercise, the brain needs cognitive exercise too. And we believe that this may help to slow the rate of cognitive decline and also help to build up a cognitive reserve. So this is the idea that if you build up a really high level of cognitive function earlier in life, then even as as there's some decline as you age, you're still, you still have enough function to have a good quality of life. Very similar with physical exercise, where we're kind of building up our ability so that even though we can't 100% stop decline, we can slow it down and we can also make sure that we still retain enough function for a long period of time that we can have a good quality of life. So we can say that we, we know from the research that a cognitive workout seems to be really important for brain health. And certainly Sudoku does have the potential to provide that. So we, can, we know that Sudoku uh, exercises reasoning skills, problem solving skills, right? Stimulates the prefrontal cortex. That's the very front part of your brain that's involved in logic and solving problems and bigger picture types of, of thinking. Um, so we know for sure that Sudoku does stimulate that part of the brain. Um, it also seems to help with concentration, paying attention, very challenging for many people in the modern world. Um, it seems to help with memory, right? Stress reduction, if you is something that you enjoy. Um, and it's fun, right? People who enjoy Sudoku find Sudoku fun. And at the same time, it's a mental challenge. And so if you're um, spending your your fun time doing something that's challenging for your brain rather than something like just watching TV as uh, something passive, then that's definitely gonna be good for your brain health, right? Providing that extra challenge. Now, if you are looking to use Sudoku, as a way to maintain or improve your cognitive function. It's important to know that there have been some studies showing that playing games like Sudoku on a regular basis has a benefit for cognitive function and longevity. There are some other studies that have not shown the benefit. And why the disconnect? It appears that it may be because of the challenge. So in a lot of these studies, people start playing the same game and then they play the same one for a long period of time, often every single day. And when you do that, sure, it's challenging at first, but over time you get good at it. And then it's really not providing your brain with a challenge anymore. It gets kind of too easy, right? Too comfortable. And so, yes, you do want to have a consistent habit so that you don't just forget and, and not, you know, get your cognitive exercise. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're not doing exactly the same thing every day or even every week, right? That you're providing your brain all the time with these new challenges. So for example, increasing the difficulty of your Sudoku puzzles, right? Once they start to feel a little bit comfortable, you push into that slightly challenging territory where it feels just maybe a little too hard for you. Or you could time yourself. So going faster is another way to provide the brain with challenge or do a variety of different types of Sudoku puzzles. Maybe not always the classic three by three grid, but maybe a different size, maybe a different shape of grid. There's a lot of variety of Sudoku out there. So providing your brain with these different types of challenges is key to helping get that effective cognitive workout that you're looking for. As far as how often you should do it, it's very, very hard to say based on the research because um, we really don't have good studies comparing, for example, every day to every other day to every week right? We, with the same. It, it, it's hard to say on a research kind of basis, right, an evidence-based way um, exactly how often you need to do it. Uh, but you do need to make sure you're doing it on a regular basis. And for most people, something like every day or a few times a week on particular days is a little bit easier to remember than like every once in a while when I feel like it. Um, so you do want that consistency. At the same time, again, make sure that you are getting that challenge. And you may want to incorporate other types of brain exercise. Maybe some days you do Sudoku, maybe some days you do crossword puzzles, maybe you learn a language, anything that's challenging to your brain, that's new information for your brain, a new puzzle for your brain to solve. That's what's going to provide you with those benefits. Now, we do want it to feel a little challenging, right? It shouldn't feel easy, but at the same time, we don't want you to go to the point where you're real stressed out and frustrated about it, right? If we challenge too much, 
we can hit a level where it starts to cause stress and that's maybe going to be counterproductive because chronic stress is really not great for brain function itself. So we don't want to push into stress territory. We just want that just right amount of challenge where it just feels a little bit difficult, a little bit stretchy, but not so much that it's really stressful. Um, now remember, you do need to give your brain cognitive exercise on a regular basis, but for good brain function and longevity, we also need to pay attention to a few other things. Sleep is a huge one. Getting the consistent eight hours of high quality sleep every single night, really prioritizing that, super crucial for brain health. Um, paying attention to your stress levels, so we know that chronic stress damages cognitive function and longevity. We want to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves in that way. Um, making sure you're getting good nutrition, especially essential fatty acids, which are known to be really important for brain function, especially omega-3s. You can get them from eating fatty fish or from supplements for a vegan option or a more consistent option. Um, and there are a variety of other nutraceuticals that could be beneficial for brain health. One that's shown a lot of promise in recent research is punicic acid and omega-5 fatty acid um, that appears to help slow the rate of cognitive decline, protect cognitive function for a longer period of time. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us. We're at knowledge at And as always, we're wishing you great brain health.